If you overthink the golf swing, your swing probably feels like this on the inside. It feels like gibbery mess. Try to put the club in all these positions. Your brain is just clouded with tips. You don't know what to do. How do you get the club on the proper path? How do you just have fun? I just want to play good golf. The way you do that is you learn how to get the club on one path instead of many. So in today's episode, you're going to go from thinking too much, and we're going to put all our thoughts in the shredder. You'll have one swing thought that works all day long. And it's going to get crispy ball striking shot after shot. We're thinking about the hands. Oh, that feels so good. And you'll be doing that time and time again. It doesn't get any better than that. That makes you want to go play golf. Those top shots don't make you want to play golf, but those shots make you want to play golf. So what did I think to execute that shot while talking to you at the same time? I wasn't thinking much about the swing. I was thinking about the hands. And that's because there's a concept here that's so important to the golf swing, and most of you don't know this one. And that's what the hands are doing versus what the club is doing. I want you to think about the club as the puppet. And I want you to think about the grip as the puppeteer. The puppeteer tells the puppet what to do. Most of us tend to think about just the puppet. We think about everything the club is doing, but we often don't think about the puppeteer, which is the hands. If you want to get a good backswing, good backswing is one where your hands travel up a path much like this. And the hands are behind the trail shoulder. It's like a diagonal upward line. And then the downswing, the same line back to the ball. It's very direct, right? I don't have to think about dropping the club and then hitting or rolling my hands. It's so simple. It's one line. The puppeteer follows that one line. It tells the puppet. The hands tell the club head where to go. When you think about moving your hands on this line, you hit all the positions. It's going to feel like magic. So here's my hands. The hands go up on this type of line. From the front, you can see it like this. Now the club head is going to follow that as if by magic. That's the line I gotta be on. So then I think about my hand path. Hands tracing up on that line and back down on that line. Good downswing. Club head's behind the hands over here. Bad downswing is when we try and be the puppet. We try and hit the ball with the club head. But we hit the ball with the hands telling the club head what to do. And that's what makes golf so different from every sport. We often are thinking about trying to hit the ball with the club head. We place our feeling in the club head. That's the problem. We're here in our minds. And so we want the club head to go to the ball. And so I'm, I'm taking the club head to the ball. But you can see how that produces chopping it over the top. It can produce flipping. But the opposite is to think, and it's so backwards, you don't hit the ball with the club head. We don't feel the club head. We're always feeling the grip. So I have to know where the grip needs to go, not where the club head needs to go. So I need the grip to go up here. The club follows. Tell the grip what to do. Tell the hands what to do, and the club head will follow. Club head going up, club head going down. And I can feel the backswing on the same path. I feel the downswing on the same path. Now that wasn't the best strike. I know I can do better than that. I'm sorry. It isn't easy to talk and swing all the time, but there's the path. There's the path. There we go. Oh, that's why we play. And I've got the hands on one path. Take out a handy dandy alignment stick driveway marker, the best training aid in golf. It's $2 and somebody said 23 cents the other day. It's price gone up from like $1.96 to $2.23. So anyway, still the best training aid in golf. We've got two things to think about here. We got the ball, which we want to hit, so lovely. We've got the hand path, which we're controlling. For us to get this right, we need to feel the hand path, not the club. So the hands, when I set up to the ball, are in line with this stick. They're not out here with the club. So there's the hand path. And the angle of the hands is a little bit inward and upward. The longer the club, the lower it goes. I want to feel my hands tracing up on this line. And voila, the club traces it perfectly. And then downswing, back on that line. Voila, downswing taken care of. Wow, 
I'm just blown away at how simple that is. <laughs> I know when I thought about doing this episode today, I, I thought it couldn't really be this simple, but I'm just coming to that realization that this is like cheating for the golf swing. It kind of reminds me of that little Ben Hogan pane of glass example, but a little slightly different. Hands going up that line, hands going down that line, and then I get to beautiful impact position, hands are ahead. So I'm thinking about that stick. And you just trace that line a few times, and then we'll hit a shot like that. Okay, that's the line, that's the line. I'm seeing out of my peripheral vision, so at first you need to get used to where the proper hand path is. So I'm trying to feel it in my mind. That was a good shot, his strike, going to the target. Felt like butter. Okay, now that I've felt that, I'm gonna try and recreate that without thinking. Good strike. That's even better. Whoosh! Don't you love that sound? That's why we play golf. It makes you want to do it again and again and again. Hands, hands, hands. That's another one right to the target. Beautiful strike. Not a whole lot of effort. Creating a nice line of divots. So that's a great starting point for you to build up a perfect golf swing. The perfect golf swing that works best for you. The second thing we're gonna do is take out my favorite. This builds up your swing easily. It's called a lag shot. It's a weighted club head and a whippy shaft. If you want to feel a good golf swing, the lag shot will teach you much like a teaching pro. It's like having your own personal in-home golf instructor. Now, how does the lag shot fit in with today's lesson? Well, the lag shot works best when it feels lightest. When it feels heaviest, it means your club is off path. So when I swing, I take the path of least resistance, the hand's going up this way. But if I take a path that's not the correct path, like if I take my hands in too much, the club gets really heavy. Ooh, it's weighing down, it's drooping. If I take it way out, it gets more heavy, it just droops. So I can only swing this club, the lag shot, on the proper backswing path it's the lightest here, and then a downswing, same way. It's the lightest here. So I can't drop the club too much, it gets too heavy. And I also can't swing over the top because then whew, it wants to swing in and hit me in the pants. I'm not wearing a cup, you know that. We don't want that. So if I have the lag shot feeling the lightest possible, I will train the proper golf swing motion for me. I'll know the path I need the club to swing on. So it's lightest here, lightest here, and there we go. That's the path the club needs to be on. And you see it going to my target, as if by magic. But it's really just me t saying to my hands, okay, hands, tell the club head the, la the lightest path here, the, le the path of least resistance, the lightest path is this one, back and through. That means it's the most efficient path, so keep it light. Flag shot being light is telling you everything is on perfect path. You don't need to video your swing either. Keep it light, keep it light. I'm not trying to swing hard or anything. I'm just being aware of the weight of it. I've got a link to this in the comments and description below. You get a nice discount when you use the link that I've got there. So I've got the feeling of the club staying light. Lag shot, you just taught me beautifully, like having my own instructor there. You know, you could go take thousands of lessons, someone telling you to get in the correct positions, or you can just get a lag shot and it already puts you in them all the time. And you just keep swinging, you swing at home. Make like 10 swings at home with it and do that a minute a day, 15 seconds a day, to have the proper path, to have a lot more fun. So we've got that club feeling light. There's that lag shot path again right there. Wow, I, oh, I just felt something there. It feels like the lag shot just created a railroad of where my hands should go. Like, like the feeling was so good that I can only feel the right path right now. I know that if I go on the wrong path, I can feel that lag shot drooping sensation that I just had a few moments ago. Or if I go too far out, I can, I can feel it drooping the wrong direction. The club's getting heavy. Oh, that's so gold. That's so gold. This is why it's consistently voted the best training aid. It's teaching. So let's get it again. I don't want to lose this feeling. Never going to give you up. Never going to let you down. Thank you, lag shot. And then it's light here. Okay, it's really light here, it's too heavy here, it's too heavy there. And the weight of this thing, oh, I can't lose this feeling. Keep it light, keep it light. Oh, I chunked it, it felt heavy at one point. 
Black shot. Don't let me fall into despair. What? You said you won't? I knew you wouldn't. Don't let me down. Blackshot talks to you too. Hands going up the power path, it's staying nice and light. Okay. Let's do it nice and slow. Keep it, keep it smooth, hand path. Stay light, stay light, stay light. Good. That was righteous. You know, you do this and you start feeling like Link Ray in Rumble. That was rocking. That was a lot of fun. That's what golf's supposed to be. When you do 10 swings a day with the lag shot, it's going to get the proper hand path feeling so that when you go out on the golf course, your golf swing stays automatic all day long. Thanks for tuning in today, and I'll see you in a future episode.